Up until about a year ago, I was a lifetime Mac user and did all of my creative work on a full spec 2019 MacBook Pro. And then last year, after feeling like I was missing out on some performance, I finally decided to throw myself in the deep end and get myself a custom PC. And now just over a year later, after putting my PC through its paces as my primary work computer for all of my creative work, I can say that I'm happy with the performance increase I've gotten, but it's been far from smooth sailing and the transition has definitely come with its pros and cons. So in today's video, I wanna talk about my experience switching over, some of the advantages and disadvantages of both systems, and answer the question of whether I'll be going back to Apple anytime soon. The first and honestly the main reason for my switch to a custom PC was the price. You're just gonna be paying more for performance in an Apple product as you would for that same performance in a custom PC. At the time, back in 2021, when I was looking to upgrade, my main two options were the M1 16 inch MacBook Pro or an older iMac Pro, which both for the specs that I needed would have cost me somewhere between 7,000 and 9,000 Australian dollars. Whereas to compare that to my PC with 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and Intel Intel i9-11900K CPU and an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090 GPU, which at the time I got it was basically impossible to get your hands on. Plus being a pre-build, which obviously demands a higher price, only set me back 6,299 Australian dollars, which even if I compared to the new M1 Ultra Max Studio with very similar specs to my PC, that would still cost me 7,599 Australian dollars. And then you have to consider the fact that if I was more experienced building my own custom PC or had the patience to learn to do so, I wouldn't have had to pay for a pre-build and my PC for the specs that I have would be considerably cheaper. I paid a premium for the convenience of not having to source my own parts and put it together myself. But if you're more capable than I am or just willing to take the time to learn how to do it yourself, then you'd be able to get the same performance at an even lower budget. So if you're on a bit of a budget and you wanna maximize your performance and you're not really married to either operating system, then I would definitely recommend going down the route of a custom PC. One of the issues that bugged me the most with Apple in the past is its complete lack of user upgradability. What you buy is what you've got until you upgrade to the new model. Whereas with a custom PC, you have the ability to continuously upgrade your system as you need it, essentially future-proofing your purchase, which is where the sponsor of today's video comes in, which is Kingston Fury Ram. Now for me, working with companies that I actually use when I take on sponsors for this channel is super, super important to me. And since I already had 64 gigabytes of Kingston Fury Beast DDR4 RGB memory in my PC build, it was an obvious answer for me to say yes when they reached out wanting to sponsor my channel. Now for me, having the ability to continuously upgrade my setup as cameras and software continue to become more and more powerful is an absolute must. I never wanna feel like my creativity is limited by the hardware that I have and buying a completely new computer every single time I need an upgrade just isn't an option for me. With Kingston's DDR4 RAM, not only does the RGB lighting make it look good, but it's an incredibly simple process to install and easily upgradable in the future. Now for me, 64 gigabytes has been more than enough for what I need. Not only giving me blazing fast speeds in programs like Blender, Photoshop, and Premiere, but also giving me the opportunity to run these programs simultaneously with no noticeable drop in performance. And if I ever did need to upgrade for whatever reason, they come in kits with capacities all the way up to 128 gigabytes for those of you that need that extra power. All of that on top of the fact that the Fury line is designed specifically for gaming, making it the perfect mix of performance for my creative work and then also my free time spent running hot laps in an F1 around Albert Park. So if you're interested in upgrading your build, I will have a link in the top line of the description. And thank you again to Kingston for sponsoring today's video. Like I said, for me, having the ability to future-proof myself as much as possible and lengthen the lifetime use of the computer that I use for my creative work is an absolute necessity because it just isn't feasible to upgrade my system completely every two to three years as technology continues to develop. Even with my full-spec 2019 MacBook Pro, which was the most powerful MacBook that money could buy at the time, even just 12 months later in mid-2020, I already felt like I was falling behind the eight ball of the power that my system had had. And with no upgradability, my only option was a complete upgrade of my hardware, which would have cost me seven to nine thousand dollars Australian at the time. <laughs>
Reason number three is the improved performance of a dedicated GPU. Now for me, I can only speak from my experience. I don't own an M1 Ultra Mac Studio. I don't even own any of the M1 products, so I can't benchmark it against my current setup. However, from my time with my custom PC, I can confidently say that the performance increase from having a full-size dedicated GPU is night and day for things like rendering videos and 3D artwork. And yes, these benefits are small, but if I take that performance increase and I span it over the course of an entire year's worth of creative, work, the time that I'm saving is enormous. Then there's just little things like scrubbing through a Premiere Pro timeline or using smart objects in Photoshop. I'm never having to wait for my PC because everything happens almost instantaneously, which makes the creative process that much more enjoyable because there's no buffer between my creativity and output. I'm able to do things as I think of them. Whereas in the past, I kind of just got used to how slow things were. I assumed whenever I was in Premiere Pro that there was always going to be a buffer when I was scrubbing or I knew there was always going to be a limit to how many layers I could have in a project in Photoshop or a size limit. Whereas now I know that that's not the case. You just have to have the appropriate performance for the software that you're using to keep up. Now, with all of that said, this switch hasn't been all sunshine and rainbows. There have certainly been some things that I've missed from not having an Apple setup. <music> Now this negative is purely cosmetic, but if I can be honest with you, I just don't like how big a custom PC is. Everything about having this PC for the last year has just required more of everything. And I just miss how minimal and simple Apple products are, how easy they are to use and how everything just works from less. It's kind of designed for someone who wants that minimalistic style. Now I know this is just a nice to have and really doesn't matter for my creative work. It doesn't change my ability to do what I do, but it is something that I've missed a lot more than I think I expected to when I switched over to PC. The second negative is AirDrop. It's such a simple feature that you get with Apple products, but it's one that I would honestly happily pay the difference between my PC and a Mac Studio for alone because it's such a convenient thing to have. Right now I'm having to use Dropbox whenever I want to transfer it from my computer to my phone to post things. And that whole process is just a giant pain in the ass. I'm having to pay not not only for an enormous subscription to Dropbox just to hold the files that I'm having to transfer to and from, but it takes 10 times as long to upload and download from than it would just to airdrop those files to and from. It just adds so much time to my specific workflow that I would honestly take the performance decrease to then have the time save with airdrop. Problem number three is general Windows problems. On a PC, you are responsible for keeping drivers up to date, having antivirus software, and keeping on top of your own troubleshooting when problems do come up. You could very easily have a machine that's unbelievably powerful, but only get a fraction of its total power available to you just because you didn't update a driver. All those issues are handled for you by Apple, which I guess is the reason behind the no upgrade ability because everything is tested and works straight out of the box. But if you're someone who's a little bit more tech savvy and you're willing to troubleshoot when those problems do come up, then this won't really be an issue for you. It'll just take you a little bit more time than it would if you had an Apple product. So after a year with my custom PC as my primary computer for all of my creative work, would I ever go back to Apple and upgrade to something like the M1 Ultra Mac Studio? The answer is maybe. I think for now with my creative work the way it is here on YouTube and over on Instagram, I need the performance that I'm getting out of my custom PC. And I'm kind of not really willing to trade that performance for some of the benefits that I do miss about having an Apple product. I think in the future, as the M1 chip continues to get better and better and prices continue to come down, I think I would definitely consider going back, especially as short form video is becoming more dominant in my space. I think I'm finding myself already using my phone for more of my content creation than I'm using my main camera. And for something like that, obviously being in the Mac ecosystem would be more beneficial. But like I said, I think for now, having my custom PC and having that high performance and upgradability is just too important to me to go back to something like the Mac Studio, but it's not entirely out of the question. So my answer is very anticlimactic and kind of boring and probably not what you wanted to hear, but my answer is maybe. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider liking and subscribing because it helps the channel out a lot and I would personally really appreciate it. And with all that said and done, I'll see you guys next time.